This week we have Parshiot Vayakel Pekude, as well as a special one of the Arab Parshios, the last of the four of Shabbat Sachodesh. Parshios Vayakel Pekude detail for us really a review of the way the Mishkan was constructed. And I'd like to focus in on one individual who was a key figure in the entire Mishkan experience, and that is B'Tzalel. If we note in source number one, the Chumash tells us, U'B'Tzalel ben Uri ben Chur l'mate Yehuda, Asad kol asher tziva Hashem et Moshe, B'Tzalel, and it mentions his lineage from the tribe of Yehuda, did all that Hashem commanded him, and we know there are many psukim that describe the das, the chokhmah, the wisdom, the knowledge that Betzalo had. I'd like to learn together today one medrash, which is a very famous medrash, and I'd like to try to understand a little bit perhaps some of the symbolism within the medrash. It's obviously a lot more to be said. And to be able to see how the symbolism affects our life. The medrash says the following. Rabbi Shmuel ben Nachman said in the name of Rabbi Yonasan, The name B'Tzalel indicates his wisdom. For when a Kaddish Baruch Hu told Moshe to tell B'Tzalel to make a Mishkan in Aaron and the other vessels, Moshe reversed the order and said to him, Make in Aaron and the vessels and the Mishkan. So the command that Moshe Rabbeinu gave to B'Tzalel was to first make the Aaron, right, the Ark, the different vessels like the shulchan, the showbread table, the menorah, the candelabra, and then ultimately the mishkan, the structure itself. But Salo then said to him, to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, the way of the world is to build a house and then bring into it the vessels. Right? First you have a house, once you've built the house, then you bring the couches in and the tables in and then the furniture in. But you told me to first make the vessels and then the Mishkan. Where will I put the vessels that I make? So Betzalo said to Moshe, if I make the vessels first and we don't have a Mishkan, we don't have a house for it, so then what am I going to do with the vessels? It makes more sense to first build the Mishkan, the house, and then you put the vessels in it. Make the vessels second. Perhaps Hashem told you to make the Mishkan first and then the Aaron and vessels. Moshe responded, you are called Betzal Kel and the shadow of Hashem, for you knew precisely how to interpret Hashem's word as if you were there in his shadow. Now obviously this medrash raises a tremendous amount of questions. What does it mean that Moshe reversed the order, that Betzalo reversed, understood what the order was all about? That's one question. The second question, which is also a technical question, is what does it mean that Betzalel says, I mean, Hago Shalolam, this is the Yosef question, source number three, the way of the world. The Mishkan has nothing to do with the way of the world. The way of the world is one thing, that you first build a house, then you put the items in it. But we're talking about Karsh here, we're talking about Hashem's house. Obviously, the way we look at this world, it's not uh, the same way that Hashem builds his house. So we need to understand what does Betzalel mean by this. And finally, And source four, we know technically that the Mishkan was finished, all the items and everything, on the 25th day of Kislev, on Hanukkah. But it wasn't established until the first day of Nisan. So in Manoshach, in any case, we have the Kalim, we have the vessels, and there wasn't even a house to put them in. So what difference does it make whether the house was built first or the vessels were built? The bottom line is both the vessels and the house were waiting till the first of Nisan to put the whole thing together. So really does it make a difference if the vessels are first or the house is made first? Both of them were sitting and waiting till the two could be put together. So why not just make the vessels, have them waiting, and then make the house? What difference does it make? So obviously, in a nutshell, the issue that I think... I'd like to focus in on Amir Tzashem today, and obviously to see how it relates to our lives, is the argument between B'tzalo, or the discussion in Moshe Rabbeinu, do you build a house first, the Mishkat, and then the Kalim, and then the vessels, or the reverse, is to understand what does, symbolically, the house, the Mishkan, symbolize, what do the Kalim, the Aron, and the other vessels symbolize, and if we would understand that, then we have an understanding of what the dynamics are 
in what they're talking about and obviously again how it relates to our lives and that's part of the beauty of learning that we have seen as we've been learning together for a while that something which seems to be so distant and so unapplicable to our lives we will see has a tremendous amount of depth of meaning to our lives. As an introduction to be able to understand the two levels that with God's help we're going to work on, I'd like to first give an overall view, an overall introduction, a bit, albeit philosophical, but I think very, very fundamental in terms of our approach to the world. This introduction is found in Rav Pinkus the Sefer on, uh, on Chumash Shemot, which is an outstanding collection. It happens to be in Parshas Truma, and it's really primarily based on the Nefesh 